Homosexuality and military life are two seemingly incompatible topics that have been intertwined since time immemorial. Whether through the brothels of World War II to curb homosexual tendencies or the endless recruitment questionnaires in the Korean War, the armed forces were never certain how to handle their LGBT soldiers. On moral grounds, these individuals were deemed unfit for the tough and archaic military standards. But in reality, they proved to be as efficient and necessary as any other troops. During the Vietnam War, this issue reached a boiling point. As parallel to the bloody conflict, American society witnessed the emergence of numerous social movements advocating for the rights of sexual and racial minorities. In this military history video, we want to delve into the experiences of gay soldiers, their struggle for rightful recognition, and how the gravestone of an Air Force sergeant became a symbol of that fight. Join us on this captivating journey through the turbulent 1960s. If you ever travel to the city of Washington, United States, and make your way to the Congressional Cemetery, there you will see the final resting place of 70,000 individuals who left a mark on the land of red and white stripes. Many of the tombstones belong to the so-called Founding Fathers and those who shaped the early American laws, but one stands out not only for being much more recent. There lies Air Force Sergeant and LGBT rights activist Leonard Matlovich. On his tombstone, a simple message reads, a gay Vietnam veteran. The epitaph is completed with a poignant statement. When I was in the military, they gave me a medal for killing two men and a discharge for loving one. In many ways, Matlovich's story is a perfect example of the complex relationship the US military had with the gay community during the conflict in Southeast Asia. For his service in Vietnam, Matlovich received the Purple Heart and a Bronze Star, honors reserved for significant military sacrifices of the highest order. However, in 1975, after over 12 years of service in the Air Force, he published a memo in which he came out as a gay man. The document stated, after several years of uncertainty, I have concluded that my sexual preferences are homosexual. I also conclude that these preferences will not in any way interfere with my obligations to the Air Force. Though it may seem like a simple message today, those words were a true revolution for the military world. Below, you will see one of the first interviews given by the war hero after coming out. You should just tear me apart on the inside when I... In conversations here, people say that, you know, we're discharging this queer, that queer, throwing them out of the Air Force. On the inside, I just burn up with, you know, just... Am I a coward here and I'm just going to stand here? And never really coming up to protection of uh, my fellow minority group and men and women in the gay group. The Air Force Institution disagreed with his decision. And shortly after the memo was published, Matlovich was discharged despite his excellent service record. At that time, a lawyer suggested to the sergeant the possibility of signing a document committing not to engage in homosexual activities until his career was completed. However, the military rejected the proposal, and since then, he dedicated himself to being an advocate for the rights of gay soldiers. His impact was so significant that in September 1975, the entire world saw this headline on all newsstands and magazines, I am homosexual, a clear and forceful title for a dilemma that had lingered in the American collective unconscious for several years. Time passed, and after five years, the Air Force allowed him to return to service but Matlovich declined. Finally, he died in 1988 due to complications related to HIV. The relationship between the US military and homosexual soldiers underwent rapid changes following the conclusion of World War II. In the years following that conflict, many organizations worked towards integrating LGBT troops into the forces, understanding that a dishonorable discharge was a severe blow to employment financial stability and emotional well-being. Simply due to sexual orientation, a distinguished soldier could transition from having a stable job and a promising career to having a dismal record. That would hinder future employment prospects. Imagine the situation for these individuals, employed by a government to go to war, while simultaneously producing propaganda titled, Boys Beware, warning children about the dangers of homosexual men alleged predators lurking in the shadows to trap their victims. 
In one of those commercials, the story unfolds of an unpleasant driver who inappropriately befriends a child. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick, a sickness that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious, a sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual, a person who demands an intimate relationship with members of their own sex. While activists sought to integrate LGBT troops into the military, that was the social climate they faced. However, generations changed, and with the onset of the Vietnam War in the early 1960s, a new generation of activists emerged, questioning government values. Their message opposed the war and asserted that Washington's ideology did not align with that of their community. Stonewall riots, which occurred in 1969, are often cited as the cornerstone of LGBT rights movements, but some historians claim that these demands predate that event. According to researchers, the initial protests were related to the Vietnam War and the integration of gay soldiers into the armed forces, advocating for their participation in the military and the conflict in Southeast Asia. Before embarking on their military life towards Vietnam, recruits and applicants had to complete a questionnaire. One of the yes or no items was homosexual tendencies. Marking a negative response and lying was a violation of federal laws and an ideal excuse for a dishonorable discharge. On the other hand, marking yes could lead to job termination in the public sector, loss of civil rights, and in the worst cases, inclusion in FBI blacklists for future reference in case of LGBT-related disturbances. Finally, recruitment systems operated locally, with community members handling bureaucratic aspects. Marking oneself as homosexual was a painful way to reveal one's sexual identity to the entire town, with all the risks and anxieties that came with it in the 1960s. As the war progressed, and it became evident that a fierce and determined enemy awaited on the other side, the willingness to enlist significantly declined. Traveling to Southeast Asia was no longer seen as an incredible patriotic feat, but rather as torture. That's why many men sought to evade service by pretending to be homosexuals, using Uncle Sam's strict restrictions to their advantage. In interviews, it was effortless to mimic stereotypes and cliches associated with homosexual men. So many heterosexual recruits chose to pretend to be members of the LGBT community to avoid enlistment and being sent to war. This is how supposed homosexual tendencies became more entrenched in the collective unconscious, with being gay becoming synonymous with being cowardly or unwilling to defend the country's interests. In addition to the escalating war, a significant portion of American civil society began to protest against this violent conflict. Thousands of demonstrators opposed to the Vietnam War assembled in the nation's capital for a mass protest. For the most part orderly, minor scuffles did occur between the demonstrators and hecklers. While society began to express itself, over time the demand for young soldiers to fight battles in Vietnam increased, putting Uncle Sam in an uncomfortable position when evaluating recruits. Interviews and questionnaires became increasingly intrusive regarding sexual life. To be rejected, it was no longer enough to claim to be homosexual. One had to behave in a feminine manner and provide a series of proofs, including a history of arrests for inappropriate behavior, letters from psychiatrists and doctors confirming the alleged mental condition, and interviews with relatives to verify that the individual had never had relations with women. Many testimonies from soldiers of that time indicate that segregation due to homosexuality was respected depending on how challenging the situation was in Southeast Asia. Recruits recall marking yes to the question about homosexual tendencies, only to see the recruiting officer cross out the answer to emphasize no and finally stamp a giant accepted. The reason is quite simple. There was an ongoing armed conflict and all men were needed to defeat the feared communism embodied in the Viet Cong. These stories highlight the hypocrisy of the recruitment system, which, according to state convenience, became capable of admitting men with health problems, severe injuries, or even those considered dangerous to the moral of the troops. If you wonder why military leadership feared homosexuality so much, the answer is quite simple and seems taken from World War II. 
They were concerned that loneliness and long, strenuous days spent with other men would awaken homosexual desires among soldiers. This could be exacerbated if there was an openly gay recruit within the platoon. Additionally, internal discrimination and violence against minorities were feared, considering the limited control authorities had in Vietnam. By forcing hundreds of thousands of young people to assert their homosexual identity as a calling card to the world, the Vietnam War ended up fostering a sense of community among many individuals who felt discarded or, on the contrary, did not wish to participate under any condition in the American war machinery. This was the perfect breeding ground for congregations and protests that took place throughout the 1970s, bringing to the forefront issues of sexuality, health, and, years later, the HIV epidemic. These are the types of demonstrations that took to the streets of America at that time. Social movements are complex. Some LGBT youth were vehemently against the Vietnam War, while one of the great icons of gay men in the decade, Leonard Matlovich, was a war hero seeking recognition and respect from his peers. Interestingly, many veterans were viewed with suspicion by more pacifist activists, as they believed these veterans had volunteered to carry out Washington's imperialistic efforts. With over 2.5 million troops sent to Vietnam, Stories cannot be easily grouped. Each person had a different experience in the war. As previously mentioned, many homosexual soldiers were honest when interviewed to join the army, but their identity was ignored in order to enlist them in Uncle Sam's ranks. Once they returned to their country, they were ignored and dishonorably discharged for their lifestyle. Even those with an impeccable service record and multiple decorations for heroic actions on the battlefield. That's why they ended up joining civil rights movements or even pacifist organizations that harshly criticized their country's war efforts. Among thousands of stories, the veteran Dave Lara stands as a paradigmatic example. He recalls his experiences as a homosexual soldier in Vietnam with a bittersweet taste, as his military efforts ended on a negative note with a dishonorable discharge. Lara spent 13 long months fighting in Southeast Asia, and during that period, he met several comrades who shared his sexual orientation. His superiors were aware and had no issues with it as long as they fulfilled their duties. Lara, who had a complex childhood, felt very comfortable in the armed forces, as he had formed a family of comrades he considered brothers. But that illusion ended in December 1969, when he was informed of accusations against him. You are a f they said, confirming his dishonorable discharge. Flora continued his life outside the military, weighing how his effort and dedication did not count for the armed forces. In 2020, there was a small act of justice when, after several years of appeals, the record of his dishonorable discharge was finally changed. Unfortunately, his story is not an exception, but a rule. Many homosexual soldiers received similar arguments after spending long months fighting in the jungles of Vietnam, witnessing the death of their friends and brothers. In the year 2010, the United States military took a necessary and belated step to settle these outstanding issues through the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy. This was announced in a press conference held at Camp Pendleton. There will be no discharge based upon your sexual orientation. And what's not? The United States government isn't trying to change what you believe, okay? The concept is clear. The sexual preferences of each individual are a private matter that has no bearing on their qualifications to serve the country, making it prohibited to deny entry into the military based on potential homosexuality. Since then, the doors of the military have been open to any member of the LGBT community, although there is still a long way to go for complete effective integration without any fine print. Perhaps one day, Sergeant Leonard Matlovich's struggle will be complete, and his gravestone in the Congressional Cemetery can reflect a resolved history. 
And so we come to the end of this video. If you want to learn more incredible stories related to the conflicts of the 20th century, we invite you to subscribe and activate the notifications on our channel. For now, we bid farewell until the next installment of Military History. Thank you for joining us.